Welcome back to NCRT class 10th chapter number 12 electricity. Children so far we learnt about how electric current is going to different for different components isn't it. So, and now in today's class we are going to learn about few factors which affect the resistance of a conductor. It means that there are certain factors which mainly affect means certain factors may increase with the increase of the second quantity and there are certain factors are there if it uh, one decrease means the other may increase such all things we are going to study about factors affecting the resistance of a conductor and there are mainly four factors which affects the resistance of a conductor that is the first one is the resistance of a conductor depends upon the length children and the second one is resistance of a conductor is also depends upon the area of a cross section and the third it says that the third factor clearly telling that it also depends upon the nature of the material of the conductor and here temperature that is fourth one temperature of the conductor means all these four factors will affect the what resistance of a conductor now we will see one by one how they are going to affect we are saying that the it, uh, resistance also depends upon length and it has been experimentally found that the resistance is directly proportional to l means l is nothing but a here length r is nothing but a resistance and this proportionality symbol what it's saying children it is what directly proportional isn't it so if length of the wire gets increased means what happens resistance also length if length increases means resistance also increases isn't it children the meaning of the this factor is same that is if the length of the given wire increases then resistance also increases suppose if the length of the wire is decreased then ultimately what happens resistance also decrease that is the meaning of the proportionality directly proportional means if one factor increases means the next factor also increases suppose if it decrease the second also going to decrease and moreover children and uh, the longer wire will offer more resistance in many practical cases what we'll do means longer wire will day means it will offers more resistance and the short wire will offers less resistance got it children how the resistance is dependent on length yes it is directly proportional to length the second factor it is saying that the resistance of the conductor mainly depends upon area of a cross section it means that the resistance of the conductor <coughs> sorry the resistance of the conductor is inversely proportional to area of the cross section got it children see here it is inversely proportional means if resistance increases means um, the area of a cross section decreases if this increases means resistance what decreasing means this is what inversely proportional one factor increases means another factor is going to decrease so uh, suppose if uh, that is area of a cross section gets doubled in general i am saying while solving the problems if they asked find the resistance of the given material if the area of the cross section gets doubled means what it becomes you have to substitute here that is r is equals to 1 by 2 means what happened to the its resistance Re resistance has reduced to now half isn't it children suppose if area of a cross section is made to half isn't it then a is nothing but a here half 1 by 2 so this uh, 2 goes to numerator means r will become 2 isn't it so if area of a cross section of the conductor is reduced to half means the resistance of the wire increases by two times means increase resistance can be doubled over there you know children area of a cross section means this suppose if this is the conductor this is called the area of a cross section isn't it children 
so we can say that the second factor resistance of the conductor is inversely proportional to area of the cross section of the conductor suppose if the area of the cross section is made to two times means doubled its resistance get reduced to half suppose if area of the resistance of the conductor sorry area of the cross section of the conductor is reduced to half means then resistance can be made to two times means it can be doubled <coughs> sorry and in general uh, the resist that is uh, the thickness of the conductor is usually represented in the form of a diameter also children means a can be taken as a diameter square so what happens if we uh, substitute here means r is nothing but a inversely proportional to that is length divided by d square means re resistance of the conductor is inversely proportional to square of the diameter of the conductor understanding children sometimes even the thickness can also be represented by diameter means square diameter square is nothing but a area of a cross section here so for example while solving the problems if they asked if the diameter of the wire is made to uh, two times means if it if the diameter of the conductor is doubled means what you have to do r is equals to if <coughs> diameter is gets doubled means substitute the d uh, in place of a d that is two square means one by fourth means r is equals to 1 by 4th time means if diameter of the wire get doubles means resistance will reduce to 1 by 4th times got it children how much time it has reduced 1 by 4th time it has reduced suppose if they asked if the diameter of the conductor is reduced to half it means d is equals to half you have to substitute that 1 by 2 whole square means 1 by or 1 upon 2 square means 4 this 4 goes to numerator means r will becomes 4 isn't it so we can say that if the diameter of the conductor is reduced to or is made to half then resistance of the conductor can be increased to four times got it children yes this concepts you have to understand clearly and remember children because while uh, solving the problems you can come across with all such questions okay come back to the area of a cross section so what it is saying resistance of the conductor r is inversely proportional to area of a cross section of the conductor and the third will says it also depends upon the nature of the material you know children mainly the resistance is going to depend upon the type of the material which we are using for example if a wire let us take a copper wire and a nichrom wire isn't it here copper is a metal whereas nichrome is a alloy means its resistance will be very low when compared to the copper isn't it children so uh, it has even experimentally found that though the length of the both the wires have equal length and a diameter but the nichrome wire offers 60 percent 60 times more than that of the copper wire children so this clearly tells us that resistance of the conductor depends upon the nature of the material means it depends upon the type of the material which we are using and the fourth factor says that it depends upon the temperature of the conductor and in general all pure substances can be increased with increasing the temperature and decreases on lowering the temperature children understand all pure metals can be increased by increasing the temperature and it can also be decreased by lowering the temperature so once again recall children all the factors it mainly depends that is directly proportional to length 
then it depends upon area of a cross section of the conductor that is inversely then it also depends upon the nature of the material which we are using and the fourth factor says it depends upon the temperature of the conductor conductor resistance of the conductor is proportional that is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area of the cross section got it children yes you have to remember this formula means here resistance is directly proportional to length and resistance is inversely proportional to area of a cross section of the conductor and also it depends upon the type of the material which we are using and it in, it also depends upon temperature so let us uh, write this equation means we uh, if we use some constant here what happens let us see and now we will learn about that is resistivity from the previous that is expression we have found that r is inversely proportional to a means directly proportional to l and inversely proportional to a and if we remove this symbol what we have to do we need to use some constant isn't it here r is equals to rho into length divided by area of the cross section where rho means it is nothing but a children it is a proportionality constant and it is called electrical resistivity electrical resistivity electrical resistivity you know what is the meaning of electrical resistivity it is the just a characteristic property of a material children and you remember here rho is a constant in previous that is in the ohm's law we have used what r as a constant and r is nothing but a resistance similarly here rho we are using as a constant proportionality constant we are using and it is called electrical resistivity nothing but a it's a characteristic property of a material characteristic property of material the si unit of resistivity it is ohmmeter children ohmmeter means resistance unit is ohm and here resistivity is unit is ohmmeter isn't it this is the symbol you have to use and the si unit of resistivity is ohmmeter understand children how we have that is a right expression for resistivity yes r is equals to rho into length divided by area of a cross section and this in terms of a resistivity how can we write r into a divided by length ohm meter children always you should not forget writing its unit children isn't it so resistivity of a material can be defined as that is the product of a area of a cross section of the conductor and its resistance to the what inversely proportional to length of the wire means length of the conductor so we can say that rho is directly proportional to resistance then resistivity rho is directly proportional to area of a cross section of the conductor but resistivity that is inversely proportional to length for example if length is uh, is made to uh, two times if length gets doubled means uh, resistivity is reduced to half children and suppose if the length is made to half then resistivity will increase to two times isn't it this is what the resistivity in terms of a ohmmeter we can define got it children yes and moreover the metals and the alloys children uh, will offer low resistivity and even they are called as a good conductors so to understand it let us draw 
table which will clearly gives a some picture about a different conductors, alloys and insulators resistivity. Table clearly tells us about the resistivity of a different substances. Children, it has categorized into mainly three parts. Here, the first one you will get a what? Conductors. And the second one is alloys. Isn't it? These are what? Conductors. And these are alloys, children. And whereas these, the last four, those are called as a insulators. Isn't it? When we look the resistivity of alloys and conductors and uh, insulators, we generally found what? That is higher resistivity. That is uh, resistivity of uh, alloys is uh, greater than that of a uh, constraint conductor children. So because of this reason, we will say that generally metals and alloys of a uh, low resistivity they offer what children they are offering less resistivity see compare children that is uh, uh, conductors and alloys resistivity compare with the insulator they almost have a 10 to the power of 10 to 10 to the power of 14 and like that 15 to 17 like that it means that more value whereas you see that is alloys it have in negative values means that is smaller means low resistivity we can say and um, here uh, alloys and conductors have a low resistivity when compared to insulators and low resistivity is nothing but a children those are good conductors generally good conductors will possess a resistivity in the range 10 to the power of minus 18 ohmmeter to 10 to the power of minus 6 ohmmeter children Good children, the resistivity of a good conductors lies in this range. So, the 10 to the power of six, minus 6 is good one. Means better than that of a 10 to the power of minus 8. So, generally what happens means alloys are widely used in different practical applications. Okay. Now, uh, when we uh, talk about the insulators, they have a high resistivity isn't it children resistivity of insulators so those are called poor conductors nothing but a insulators and they fall generally from 10 to the power of uh, 12 to 10 to the power of 17 ohmmeter Got it, children? So, children, we can say that generally insulators have a high resistivity, whereas alloys and conductors offers low resistivity. And the materials which offer low resistivity are called as a good conductors. Similarly, the materials which offer high resistivity are called what? Insulator or poor conductor and generally what happens for the uh, metals and alloys it takes what range from 10 to the power of minus 8 ohmmeter to 10 to the power of minus 6 ohmmeter whereas the resistivity of a insulator lies from 10 to the power of 12 to plus sign children 10 to the power of 12 to 10 to the power of 17 ohmmeter and by looking after um, that is this table we can clearly say that alloys have that is uh, more resistivity than that of a uh, one conductors because of this reason that is uh, alloys generally do not oxidize means they do not burn easily at high temperature also and we will use what for different electrical components that is especially in the heating devices alloys will be widely used children you know they should not melt easily even at a high temperature because of that reason alloys are widely 
widely used in the heating devices like a electric toaster electric iron isn't it those all coils are made with what alloys means they offer low resistivity they do not oxidize easily they do not burn easily at high temperature and because of that reason alloys are generally used in heating devices like toaster iron isn't it and then geyser we will use and moreover children you know in the filament of the bulb isn't it there also for making we will use what tungsten it also doesn't oxidize easily children and uh, moreover that is for the making of filament of the bulb tungsten metal is used children and also for making transmission lines means for making wires copper and uh, aluminium we will use because they offer a low resistivity see children the copper is having a 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 8 ohmmeter nothing but it have a low resistivity see when when we take glass it have a more resistivity so we can't use that because it's a poor conductor so what we will do for making a filament of a bulb tungsten uh, metal will be used and for making a wires copper and aluminium will be used and here you will get a one doubt children silver is less than that of a copper isn't it children but we are not going to use that you know children because silver is a very costly material means it's a costly metal when compared to <coughs> copper and a aluminium because of this reason we will use what copper and a aluminium actually children silver is a very very best good conductor we can see isn't it but due to its price its costlier one we will use what copper and a aluminium comparatively these two metals are less in cost isn't it so we will use what copper and a aluminium rather than a silver silver is also one one of a best good conductor we can say because of its low resistivity value got it children in this table you will find almost silver is a very very less resistivity metal got it children yes i hope in this class you all understood about what are the factors which will affect the resistance of a conductor and how resistivity is going to depend upon certain factors and uh, um, that is uh, good conductors will have a low resistivity and a poor conductors will have a high resistivity all such important things we have learned in our next class we will solve a few numerical problems based upon these children